Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Let's help you fix that aim with the R301 and talk about how you can master the gun. If you find this video helpful in any way, shape, or form, you can use code DAZ at checkout for a discount at G Fuel or DX Racer, or just leave a thumbs up, or just hang out and watch the video. So let's get on with the video. Remember, as I cover my previous guides, FLV does not impact recoil. I'll create a separate video demonstrating this as I don't want to waste your time. You can watch my flatline guide or R99 guide, but just the crux of it, remember that recoil and apex always follows the same outline. It may have some miter spread variances, but the movement is always the same. Here's a quick example. I'm going to use a 3x so you can see this way better. Notice the spray movement does not change. So we kind of already have a general understanding of the R301 here. So now that we got that concept down of recoil not changing, let's just get right into the quick basics of the gun. The R301 is a gun that utilizes light ammo. It has the following ammo counts for each mag. I'm gonna showcase each mag and also its max damage on screen so you can get a feel for its overall potential. So here's the gun without a mag, it has 18 bullets within it. Next is tier one, 20 bullets, white mag. As you can see, it's full damage. Next is tier 2 blue mag, 25 bullets. And of course, tier 3 purple mag with 30 bullets. It does 14 damage to the body and 11 to the legs, and 28 damage to the head. So that's obviously two times the amount of damage if you were going for the body. You can also change to a single rate of fire and also boost that damage with an anvil receiver. I feel this is definitely underutilized for this gun. I feel th that's the case because the spray potential once you master it, it's just overall really effective. Now let's dig deep into the overall R301 recoil pattern. Just a quick note that barrels do impact the amount of recoil for both horizontal and vertical. I'm going to teach you how to handle the recoil without a barrel because obviously that's going to be the most difficult. But real quick, I want to show you the difference of how drastic it can be without a barrel going to a gold barrel. So you see this, uh, obviously we're kind of far away, but I'm, the reason I'm doing that is because the spread is more noticeable further away. And obviously if you're really close, recoil matters less. But it makes a big difference. But again, I recommend learning the pattern without the barrel mod, just so it's you learn it more difficult, so that when you get the gold barrel, it's a lot easier to maintain. I'm going to use the largest mag so you can learn the whole pattern. Just remember, smaller mags obviously cut it off earlier. So let me show you a quick example. As you see, the recoil remains the same again, with no mag versus the full mag of the purple, obviously. It depends how much you get to utilize in the encounter. So if you have the no mag, then you don't get the rest of the recoil spray, but it is the same. So onto the uh, the recoil control. What you're seeing, obviously, is my preferred FOV, which is max, at 101. And I match my sensitivity to my hip fire, so if you're seeing me shoot, my sensitivity is 13.42 inches per 360, and I've been floating around between 13.42 and 15.5. I personally match my hip fire to my 1x and 2x zoom. That's my personal preference. Um, if you're on controller or PC, you, I always recommend at least messing with your ADS if you want. Apex naturally slows down your ADS speed when you're, obviously that means aim down sights. So let's fire away. We're gonna see here it's shown at full speed, the recoil. Now we're gonna break it down in slow motion. I'm gonna play it in loops and freeze frame as needed and show various things on the screen. The recoil kicks up, then goes to the right, and then switches quickly to the left, then right, then finally arcs around. So essentially you have to worry more about the vertical recoil initially, and then be ready for the horizontal afterwards. It doesn't really kick vertical anymore. You're really strictly focusing on the horizontal. It's why the R31 can be so effective, because initially you know that you just have to handle for vertical recoil. And then, of course, it gets more difficult to control longer range because the horizontal is a lot more difficult to control, especially whenever it arcs. But when you're close range, it's really, really easy to nail somebody and absolutely laser somebody. And that's where the strengths of the R301 comes in, especially if you're landing those headshots and you know that it does 28 damage max. To counter this recoil, the obvious is, depending on your sensitivity, if your mouse, keyboard, or controller, you want to pull left after the vertical kick, then go right, and then left to counter the remaining recoil. I would not worry too much about the arc at the end and focus on the definitiveness of the horizontal rather than focusing on the vertical. I would recommend not aiming too high above the head and go for the neck. The reason why 
is because once you get the shot, you know that the vertical recoil of the gun, even if you aim for the neck, is at least going to get a headshot. If you're shooting them in the forehead, as an example, and you kind of screw up your, uh, your recoil control, or you don't do it fast enough, then obviously the bullets are going to aim above the head and you're going to start to miss. Use the recoil to help you in this case. Recoil, and this goes for almost any gun, especially when it comes to the R99 or anything like that. Use the recoil to your advantage. Don't let it be detrimental to you. So use that kick and have it help you in those encounters. Then obviously later you just have to account for the horizontal of sway going left and right. And you can do this with your movement. If you utilize your movement, it can really be a game changer of moving left and right. But just be sure you're not predictable in your movement. I'll probably cover this in a later video where movement is extremely vital to controlling recoil as well. But I can always tell in an encounter when somebody is trying to move just to control recoil and they become very predictable and they're very easy to kill. I know that was a bit complex there, so let's keep uh, moving on here. So again, the problem I made with this gun overall is that people aren't compensating for the horizontal, especially at longer ranges. So let me show you how much that horizontal can hurt and why it's so vital. And just put it in a real world scenario if somebody's moving left and right and you're trying to track them and the gun is kicking a little bit left and right. So obviously you see the verticality is really not there, but then somebody's trying to side sway you at a longer distance as I'm showing here on screen, it's going to be very difficult, right? you're gonna to miss tons of your shot and that arc at the end is really gonna screw you up. So by understanding this, this is really half the battle of how you really become a better player in Apex. And also remember, no matter the sensitivity as you're further away, the movement required to control the sensitivity is actually less than you think. Just because the gun kicks up a ton does not mean it requires insane movement. So just imagine you're standing still and you're moving your mouse around the screen. The part of the screen in which the recoil is happening is very small, so your recoil control and your movement has to be very refined and clean. So be sure to keep your hand fluid and relaxed when controlling recoil, because as I've stated before, tension causes fatigue and is bad for you, and because the movement produced of the gun is fluid, so you have to match it. It may seem counterintuitive to say, but tension obviously creates speed and momentum, so find that balance. Just don't death grip your mouse or controller, because if tension is too high, then your movement's going to be jerky. So real quick, let's do some exercises. I think you really should use the 3X starting on the R301 because you can see the recoil. Just be mindful that the sensitivity on the 3X is gonna be really slow, but you have the option to speed it up just to kind of help you compensate for that. It's gonna feel very jarring. Later, you can use your preferred sight such as a 1X or 2X, anything that feels a lot more comfortable. Then use the various landing platforms as shown here where you have the close range, then medium, then of course, long range. Then you can really start to kick it up and go super long range, but the idea, and don't make it super easy. I see people in the test range constantly just being super up close. And you know, you wanna look good, you wanna feel good, fantastic, but where the encounters mostly happen at Apex Legends are gonna be more at a distance most of the time, especially whenever you're walling up, and you're trying to get that kill. And if you're close range, you're gonna land your shots regardless, because you know how to handle the recoil long range, so handling it close range is gonna be much easier. So just take the time, invest. I see a lot of people making comments saying, well, when I'm in the heat of the moment, I, I don't know how to shoot, I, I panic, I freak out. Practice to where it makes your recoil control perfect, okay? Get it to the point where it's nailed down and you know exactly what the gun does without even have to having to think about it. So what you're seeing in these recordings, I hope you'll come back and look at the recoil and say, ah, so that's what it does. And that's literally why I'm doing it because even I go through some of my previous one, like the R99 or the Flatline, and I look at the recoil and I say, okay, that's what the recoil is. And it's just a nice gentle reminder there. Especially when you're in the heat of the moment, your memory will kick in and you will be able to play better and be able to clutch out one of these situations. So I hope you found this video helpful. I hope there's a lot of good tips here. I really want to talk openly and honestly from my experience of how much I've learned in BRs. And in fact, I want to do a whole video on that in the near future. I'm going to be covering, you know, even utilizing the RE45, um, tips on how to get better with the P2020, the Wingman, even the Devotion, which is now more of a uh, pickup and using even like the Havoc. So I really want to cover more of these guns and give more guides and try to figure out how to help you elevate your overall game. Again, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to use code DAZ at GFuel or DXRacer for a discount. I appreciate you guys watching the video, and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Thanks so much, guys.